Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. We've got solving quadratic equations. Continuing on with this video series, we've been uh, factoring, taking square roots, completing the square, and now in this video, using the quadratic formula. All right, let's take a look. All right, now here it is. This is the quadratic formula, and if you see an equation in this format, okay, which is standard form, what happens if you uh, set the x terms and the constant here to zero, that's the, the clue there, then you can use the quadratic formula. This is one method out of the several that are available to solve for x, okay? So if it's in this form, we can use this formula here to find out the value or values of x. Now, it looks like a mess and very complicated. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice and repetition here, but the um, the reason why this looks like this is because, and I won't derive this for you right now in this video, but basically you take this standard form equation and you do a lot of algebra steps and sort of follow the rules of mathematics and so on, and you solve for x. So you rewrite the standard form equation into this form, and that way you know how to solve for x. All right, so again, look at this example. This is, you know, a typical example of a quadratic equation. You set everything equal to zero, move everything to the left, and now you have an A, a B, and a C that you can plug into this quadratic formula. Now notice in this example here that A is one. So A represents some kind of constant or integer term. In this case, it would be a one in that example, and B, is the coefficient of the x term. In this case, it would be a positive three. And c is, including whatever sign it is here, is the constant term. So in this case, it would be a negative nine. So a is positive one, b is positive three, and c is negative nine. So now it's a simple matter of plugging in a is 1, B is 3, and C is negative 9 into this formula, which I won't do here, but I have two examples to show you. Now, a word of advice, if you haven't written this down or don't have it anywhere where you can refer to it, until you can memorize it, you'll need to write it down. So pause this video if you need to and copy that down. Now I'm going to move on to two more examples to show you how this works. When we look at problem 21 here, we have a quadratic equation with k as a variable, but it is not in standard form. And remember, the first thing we want to do is get everything over to the left side and set it equal to zero. So in effect, we are going to move these to the left side. Now the way we do that is we would add 5k to each side and we would subtract 17 to each side. All right, now, you know, the shortest way is to take everything on the right, change its sign, and put it on the left. But basically, this is what we're doing, adding opposites on both sides. So here is my standard form of this equation. We still have 11k squared, and now we have a positive 5k, and we have a negative 17, and all of that is equal to 0. Now this is in standard form, and I'm going to locate my a, which is e positive 11, b is a positive 5, and c is a negative 17. Now we're going to substitute it in the quadratic formula and solve. All right, hoping that you have it written down somewhere, but remember we start with x equals negative b. Well, if b is positive 5, then we can just say negative 5. Okay, got to watch the signs a lot on this. Now it's plus or minus the square root of, okay, don't forget the plus or minus here, b squared, which would be 25, minus 4 times a times c. Well, what is a? It is 11. Put that in there. 
And what is C? Negative 17. All right, so it looks like pretty complicated on the top, but it's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared, that's 25 now, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2A, which is 2 times 11. Okay, this is only substitution. That's all we're doing. Let me continue. So as we continue, it's 25 plus 748, and that comes from a negative 4 times positive 11 times negative 17. So we do have a positive amount here. We add it together to get 7073. Can't take the square root of that. Can't simplify it without turning into a decimal. So believe it or not, that is our value of x, and it's two values because of that plus and minus. Now I can leave it in this form, or... I can write it in set notation, which may look like this. So notice that the plus minus radical there is taken care of right here and right here. So you check with your teacher or your textbook and see which way you want to write it. Now let's do one more for the sake of this video. All right, number 22, again, notice it's not in standard form. So when I move everything to the left side, now be careful about the sign changes here, your standard form of this equation is 6p squared plus 8p minus 64 equals 0. It tells you that a must be positive 6, b must be positive 8, and c must be negative 64. Let's plug it in the quadratic formula x equals negative b, so it would be negative 8, plus or minus the square root of, usually start with a pretty long radical bracket there, b squared, so that would be 8 squared, I can go ahead and write 64, minus 4ac, so it's minus 4 times 6 times negative 64. All right, don't forget your negative signs where it's appropriate. Then we have it all over 2a. And a is 6, so it would be 12. Okay, 2 times 6. All right, continuing on, we still have a negative 8 on the front of it. Plus or minus the square root of. Now you can start to take a few shortcuts here. I'll go ahead and write it out. 64 plus, because we have a, a two negative signs are being multiplied here, 15, 36, all of that over 12. All right, a few more steps. We're going to add up these two numbers inside the radical and see if we can take the square root. Yes, we can. It's 1,600. So it's negative 8 plus or minus, what's the square root of 1600? Yes, that would be 40. Now all of that is over 12. Okay, now that tells us that x is, let's make the 40 the positive amount there, so negative 8 plus 40 is 32 over 12. Or now we'll make the 40 negative. Negative 8 take away 40 is negative 48, and that would be negative 48 over 12. So simplified, um, if I divide each of these numbers by 4, that would be um, 32 over 3, or excuse me, that would be um, 8 over 3, which is 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, that's a possible answer for x, or negative 4. All right, now let's look at it in set notation. All right, so that's just another way to write it. All right, two examples of using the quadratic formula. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. 
So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.